you know what? It's not even that I choose them. They choose me. No, it's not true, Amelia. <laughs> right, so... You were doing so well. She's like, I take accountability for my choice. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm helpless. They okay, just choose okay. me. Okay, I take, I, take, I, take account, I take accountability for the fact that I have allowed men to treat me like shit. He's a very interesting character anyway. You're always honest with him, right? I always say, you're like a brother to me. You're like, and he's like, oh, why did you have to say that? He's like, step bro. I'm like, no, no. <laughs> He's trying and to I'm enter not that even, category, not even boy. Set, bro. You're just my He's brother. Trying to enter that You're just category. my friend. Yo, guys, welcome back to another episode on my channel. I'm sitting in this spot, which means, which means, I've got a great conversation lined up for you today. You know, on this channel, we like to talk about all things dating and relationships and seeing what we can do to attract the kind of person we want. So, without further ado, please welcome Amelia to the show. <laughs> welcome. <Hello. laughs> How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. You all right? Yeah, I'm yeah. good. I'm good. <laughs> Most of y'all are probably used to seeing her on TikTok, you know, doing her lives. But now she's entered the YouTube space. We are here. It has to yeah. be done. I'm I'm used to talking to a camera. So I'm like, I know. trying not to. <laughs> In this case, I'm just like, nah, it's just you and me having a conversation <laughs> that they get to watch. Um, so I like to jump straight in, Amelia. So tell us your age or your age range, asking a lady her age. And one thing a guy should know about you if he wants to take you on a date. Um, so I'm 29. Mm. And I guess the biggest thing that a guy would have to know taking me on a date is that I'm a mum. Mm. So getting into anything with me is going to involve potentially taking on children as well. Yeah, 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 of course. So that's, yeah. I don't like, obviously being a mum is like one of the biggest parts of my identity, but I also do have Amelia as well. So. Yeah, there's Amelia the person. Yeah as well outside of the mom yeah do you feel when you go on dates with guys do you feel is there an element of I guess maybe pressure or an obligation for you to like tell them that straight away do you share it later do you kind of see if you like the guy first how do you handle that well it's interesting because I do social media mm. obviously people do look at my social media profile you're going to see that I'm a mother of two because that's in my bio yeah um when it comes to dating apps though it's it's a really weird one because I want to protect my children from potential predators, let's say, right? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when it comes to, say if I'm on Hinge or a dating app, I don't like to put that I've got children because I, I worry that there might be men that are seeking single mums, particularly Interesting. to get two children. Oh. But then at the same time, I don't want to not say that I'm a mum because I don't want, I understand that, some people don't want to be with people that have children. Sure. So I, I don't want to feel like I'm lying, but in a sense, I'm kind of protecting that protecting them. space. I think that's fair. I think um, I think if you share it on the first date, I think yeah. it's, cause usually a lot of time these things come up in conversations on the first date. Mm. Like, you know, what's your lit, you know, have you ever been married? I guess, you know, do you have any kids, etc. cetera? Um, what's your body count? No, we should be asking <laughs> that, let's not do that. Um, but yeah, I think that's normal if it comes up on the first date. I mean, if you don't lie about it, then. yeah. You know yeah, I mean? no, I don't lie about it, but it's just something that like, I guess I have to talk to somebody a bit first and then I put it in there and mm. then that's their like choice whether to say, oh, it's not really what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah I think that course. honesty is like the biggest thing as well. Like I not, I don't want to get my time wasted. So somebody just needs to like be like, okay, that's not for me and that's fine. And I'll respect that decision. Yeah. Are you, are you kind of definitely looking for you know, something serious where I guess the guy you you would even involve yourself with now, he potentially would become that step figure role in their lives. Are you definitely looking for something serious in that sense? Because I guess if you're looking for something kind of more chilled, where you're kind of like, oh, he's attractive, we get on, but you know, you're probably not gonna be taking that position long-term. I guess they don't really need to yeah. know, do they? For me, like I definitely, the, the next person I'm with, I, I want it to be a serious circumstance. Sure. Um, dating in this generation is just extremely difficult as it is, mm. but then having children as well is, it's a little bit harder. Um, mm. But yeah, the pressure of like, finding somebody that's suitable to come into my life as well because I, I've been single for three and a half years now that in itself was a very traumatizing situation for me mm. um and I've it's taken me a very long time to heal right uh and I feel like I'm in the stage now where I've I've healed from it all mm. but I'm also extremely guarded so I don't know if I'm like emotionally available 
for mm. men at the moment myself okay because i still lack a lot of trust right and even over the last three and a half years i've been seeing people and they've just proved to me again and again that men are pretty shit not all men not all men uh, listen let's do, <laughs> let's let's explore that that's why we're here that's why we're here see if all men are trash <laughs> um what when you say that so men have at least your experience in the past few years have what's the word i'm looking for um, not re-established, have reinforced this idea that, you know, a lot of guys can't be trusted. Mm. Has there been like a common theme? Has there been something like a pattern that you recognized maybe in these kind of men? Is it something different every time? I think, and I hate to admit it, but it is partly my fault because I do, ign I have ignored red flags. Okay. And... So like, I'll, I, I usually go for the same kind of men with similar background stories. Or, okay, similar origin stories, <laughs> yeah. similar villain um, origin stories. But these men are also very smart and they know what they're doing. Okay. And I think I've been very vulnerable in the past, quite naive because I've wanted love so badly that it's kind of led me to ignore things like that but I'm, I'm at a place now where I don't ignore it anymore but that's also why I'm not getting very far with dating or talking to people because from the moment I see a red flag I'm like okay you're done see you later like I can't I'm not doing this again I'm not giving my energy I'm not getting my heart broken again like I get that mm. I understand that and it's normal for us to be more guarded when we've the more negative experiences we've had because we're trying to protect ourselves right mm. um so in regards to in regards to, let's start with like the type of guy you like. You say you choose the same type. Give us the breakdown of your archetype guy that you typically choose. Do you know what? It's not even that I choose them. They choose me. No, it's not true, <laughs> Amelia. Right, so. You were doing so well. She's like, I take accountability for my choice. But at the same time, I'm helpless. They okay, just choose okay, okay. me. Okay, I take, I, take, I, take account, I take accountability for the fact that I have allowed men to treat me like shit. Sure. I mean, Obviously, you can't in the, what in the moment, I haven't felt like I've been allowing it. Of course. Yeah, in the moment, like I've just really liked them, and if they pick me up one day, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Yes, something's finally going somewhere. And then the next day, you know, they might not talk to me for a few weeks, and then they'll pick me up again, like because they know they have that like emotional control. Because often I find that when I do gen like I come to really like a guy it's because they've put in a lot of effort mm -hmm. to get to me because I am guarded anyway mm. so they put in all this effort then they'll they'll get me where they want me and then they'll get me emotionally attached and then once they know they've got me emotionally attached that's when they then pull away and and then they start with the oh I'm just not emotionally available at the moment I'm not looking for anything but they would have fed me bullshit beforehand about how they were looking for something. Sure. And then this is another thing as well. I feel like I'm I'm a I'm a big enough girl and like old enough and wise enough to to know that everyone has their person. And if I'm not your person, just be honest about that. Just because guys will often say, "Oh, I'm not looking for anything right now," and then a month later they'll be with somebody, and then that's like, ouch. But I would mm. rather them just sat down and said to me. I I really I really like you, but I think this is just friends. I'd rather them be honest about that than to make me feel like it's because they're not ready. Sure. Okay. I completely hear you. So I want to, I want to break that exact kind of situation down a little bit. So the first thing when you say when you said about when and then we'll come back to you describing your archetype because okay, we haven't yeah. got to that yet. So when you said about <laughs> a guy will get you to a place where he emotionally has you, then he pulls away. Mm -hmm. I completely get how it looks like that. But more often than not, it's not that he gets you to a place emotionally where you want him, then he pulls away. It's usually he gets you to a place sexually and then he pulls away. But there's a correlation with that because a lot of the time, most women generally won't be physically intimate with a guy unless there's a level of emotional rapport there, mm -hmm. right? And then especially if you like the guy as a person, you've built that emotional rapport, you have, you know, you have sex and you be physical and you really enjoy it. Naturally, there's 
there's deeper emotional connection happening a lot of the time through that through that experience and for a lot of guys if they're just if they're not looking for anything serious a lot of the times it's when you start having regular sex when you start having sex he's like okay that's somewhere that he can go to get physical intimacy so then he stops reinvesting if he's only looking for something casual so a lot of the time it's not it's not that oh, okay well now i know she's in love with me so now i'm just going to distance myself a lot of the time like guy i honestly don't think guys don't think with that level of emotional intelligence it's literally like oh okay well we started having sex i know she's open to having sex and stuff and if he's not looking for anything serious it's kind of like okay well he was looking for that situation where you where you both are having physical intimacy and because he's got to that point you guys have got to that point he then stops investing as much as before does that make yeah. sense obviously that doesn't make it okay but what i'm trying to say is the reason i'm sharing with you this side is because i want to try and show you this is how a lot of guys think mm -hmm. and i think the emotional aspect which i completely get is a lot of times how is from the feminine perspective but the physical aspect a lot of time is from the masculine perspective so guys it's like once a guy has started having sex then he's like if well if that's all he was looking for then he stops investing so he stops yeah. texting you all the time he stops taking you out etc and then especially with the whole thing of like um you know you kind of hear from him intermittently you know like you see each other one weekend and then don't hear from him for a week or two weeks and then he's blown up your phone he's like hey i'm gonna see you are you free tomorrow and you're like i get it because for you like oh there's been this gap yeah. and i've not had this emotional investment from you i've not had this time from you and i want that and now you're giving it to me and i want to hold on to that mm. i want to latch on to that and a lot of the times it's not, when I say guys aren't doing it on purpose, the emotionality isn't the on purpose because the emotionality aspect is like, okay, well now you're starting to, when he does give it to you, like I want to take advantage of that. So if he wants to see me tonight, I know I was meant to be doing this, but now I'm going to prioritize him because I haven't seen him for two weeks. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, but a lot of times, like, I promise you guys are simpler than you think. Okay. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, like I said, that doesn't make it okay. Um, but the reason it's really important to understand that side is because then you can recognize the right signs if it's going to be that. Mm. Does that make sense? Um, and then. But I do feel on. like that guys make out, make out I'm, I'm saying it like I'm villainizing you all. But no, go I, for it. I, be do feel, I do be feel honest. like guys say oh you know i want this and i want that and but they don't say that they just want something sexually and then it's only no, after won't. like that's happened and the emotional attachments there yes. that they're then like oh I, i'm not looking for anything and it's like but be where some guys <laughs> were, like some uh, guys lie for sure yeah but, and, deceived, but then i can true. understand if that's just because i'm i'm not for them and and then that's where i just want the honesty to come in like do you know what i've had a great time with you but I think we should just keep this on a friend's level or like, or whatever. Maybe uh, not even a friend level. Maybe if I'm too emotionally attached, that's probably not good for me, but I would just rather the honesty of like, but they won't, they don't want to do that because they want to keep me around for one reason. So you know why they don't do that. <laughs> you already know, you don't even tell you. <laughs> You already know why they don't do that. That's exactly why they don't do that. I'm, Cause I'm they go, oh, it's been really great, but I think we should just be friends. You're gonna be like, cool, well, like, we're not spending the night together, duh. And he's like, well, I'm attracted to so, you, so, so I don't why, wanna lose but that. Then why can't they be strong enough to be like, do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this girl in peace. She's been through enough already. Like, I'm just gonna like Because I, I won't ask for it. Ask for what? Sex. Like if, if they've mean? if they've made it clear to me that all they want is that, yep. then like I, I'm like, okay, cool. There's no like, like i don't, I don't want to just keep doing that yeah of course right but so. they're the ones who always come back to me and say like oh they're like oh what are you doing tonight or oh, 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 i want to see you and then but then obviously because i am emotionally attached i'll say yes and i'll go and i'll see them even if you know that they only want that one thing yeah it's my fault <laughs> Well, this is one of those times, Amelia, where we have to be our own parents. I think there is kind of that, um, I guess with some guys, like I've thought like, oh, maybe they'll want me if I spend more time with them and they'll see how. Right. And this is a trap that many women fall into. 
they think if they spend, if a guy, now I agree, if a guy's just looking for physical play, something very chill and casual, he should communicate that with you, right? He should. And if he doesn't, if he actively deceives you, that's wrong in his part, he's shit for doing that, 100%. But if he does say, look, I enjoy spending time with you, but I'm not looking for anything serious. And you're like, okay, I know he says that, but if I spend more time with him, maybe I can change his mind. While I understand that, that's you not taking no for an answer. Mm. It's exactly the same. Imagine if you're out at the bar with your friend Shan, who's in the room, right? And a guy approaches you and you take a look at him. He looks okay, but he's not really your cup of tea. And you go, that's for approaching me, but I'm just not interested. And he goes, nah, I can change your mind. If I spend more time with her, if I just get to, if I show her more of who I am, I'll change yeah. her mind. That's him not taking no for an answer. It's kind of pesty. <laughs> and then on top of that, and I'm saying this, I'm saying this from a place of love, but mm. I'm saying it because I want you to understand how it is for a guy. When a guy approaches you and you say no, and he's like, nah, I'm going to see if I can change your mind. He continues coming after you, trying to change your mind. Does that make you respect him more or less? Uh, less. So when a guy's being physically intimate with a woman and she wants a relationship and he says, hey, I don't want a relationship. But she continues to have sex with him in hopes of changing his mind. Is that going to make him respect her more or less? Less. And it's not respect her less as a human being, mm. but respect her less for a committed partner because the kind of woman a man wants to choose that they never admit they want to choose the woman who goes, I respect that's what you're looking for. In that case, I'm not going to be indulging in this further. Yeah. If you're, if I'm going to be sharing myself with you, if I'm going to be physically intimate with you, if I'm going to be investing myself and my energy into you, I'm looking for that level of reciprocation. And if mm. you're not willing to give me that, that's absolutely fine, but I wish you the best. Because then what happens, and this has happened with a few of my clients when I've coached them to do this, when he's ready for a relationship, he'll come back. Yeah. And he'll be like, because I know that Amelia is the relationship kind of woman. I know she's not just going to be sleeping with someone. Like I know for that she liked me so much and she still said no to me and she likes me. Mm. So I know for a fact that she yeah. ain't going to be doing this with some other guy. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I completely get how, and it can be so difficult when you really like someone and there it's almost like then dangling a carrot in front of you when they give you this level of attention yeah. and affection and you want to hold on to it a hundred percent but that's when we have to be our own parent yeah and you're a mother so you already get it there'll be times where your kids want something and you say no because it's for their own good yeah and you just need to do that for you mm. do you see what i'm saying yeah no i do i do feel like i've more recently been a lot stronger in the sense of like well I mean I, I've kind of taken myself completely out of dating mm. for now because I just don't I'm just not I'm not ready to get my heart broken again like I'm yeah I don't think anyone's ready for their heart <laughs> no no one's ready for that it, it's a risk I also sure. I feel like I invest a lot of okay this is a good good one yeah I feel I feel like guys don't actually care about getting to know I'm not going to say all women, but this is my experience. Yeah. When I start talking to a guy, they very rarely ask me questions about me. Like I obviously ask them because I'm, when you're like interested in somebody that you think could, you could potentially start dating or whatever, like you want to get to know a bit about them. I feel like guys don't really ask me much about me. They just want to talk about themselves. And <laughs> I get that. You're probably not wrong if a guy is trying to, pursue me in a certain impress way because okay. you might think oh, okay well she looks like this so she probably is impressed by this kind of guy so i want to demonstrate that i'm that kind of guy right right so that might be it but you're an attractive woman i know for sure that there are guys who actually want to know who you are you just don't give them a chance the guys that you give a chance are the ones that you're like i they don't want to get to know who i am but a hundred percent they'll be Many guys who are like, I actually want to get to know who she is, but maybe because he's not as attractive as maybe what you're used to, or maybe because he doesn't earn a certain amount or whatever, for whatever reason, mm. maybe you don't choose him. So 
that's why I want to go back to what's your typical archetypal guy? What's the typical guy that you choose? Oh yeah, we, I kind of avoided that, didn't I? Yeah, <laughs> I brought her back, guys. She tried to escape, but I said no. So I, I actually get asked this Don't question play. a lot on live when I'm on TikTok. And, of course, um, you know why People are asking. like, oh, what, what's your type? What's your type? But I think like physically, I don't think I have a type. Um, okay. But personality wise, like I look for somebody who can make me laugh. That's a huge thing for me. Like I, I love a good sense of humor. So I, I like have to, I don't know. Like there was this one guy that I was, I was dating um, last year and he was, he was so lovely and he treated me in all the ways that I, I should be treated. And, mm. but there was just that lack of humor, which really put me off. And that, that, that's interesting. Yeah. Like I didn't have, I didn't have fun. And that to me was. Did you enjoy, what, did you like spending time with him? I liked spending time with him. It okay. was, it was, it was nice. I just felt like I need somebody who's a bit more like fun and outgoing and yeah. Would you, would you say that like, previous guys that you dated and you know you're saying that they they often don't give you that treatment and stuff would you say those guys were kind of toxic oh 100 percent. okay so when we're used to toxicity healthy feels boring yes because <laughs> now here's the thing when we say someone is toxic we're in a toxic relationship that doesn't mean that every aspect of the relationship is bad because if every aspect of the relationship is bad, we wouldn't stay. Mm. But what it is, is that maybe it's not healthy, but there are elements of the of the relationship that are electric. Yeah. That's like, like, and that's why we stay. It's like, okay, yeah. you kind of semi gaslight me, but we have so much fun and the chemistry <laughs> is insane. So I'm gonna stay. Yeah. So a lot of the time when you get someone where the, that stuff, it's not toxic, it's healthy, right? but it doesn't have this. A lot of time a toxic, a toxic relationship situation is like a roller coaster. You have highs and it's so high. Yeah. You feel great. You're like, I'm with this person, we're having a great time. This is a thing. And then when it's the toxicness, you're low, you go down mm. and you're like, this is really bad. Like, I don't know why my, I feel like my pattern with men, obviously I've been single for three and a half years now. So like there's, there's been like, there's been two guys in particular that I did really fall for. And my pattern with both of them mm -hmm. was that they would just pick me up and put me down. So it was like, I was constantly chasing that high. Yes. And then I would feel, but they, they would have me so low. But as soon as they came back round and wanted to give me what I wanted again, I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Like <laughs> chasing that high, but I didn't mm. realize I was doing it, but it's only now I'm out of it that I realized that it wasn't, I don't even think that I, liked them the way I thought I liked them either. Mm. I think it was all kind of, uh, I think delusional might be. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I was a bit delusional. Maybe I made made it up in my head of what I thought it could be. Cause you, thought, you fell time, in love with the idea. The idea, that's it, yeah. Be. I fell in love with the idea and not actually in love with them. Yeah, and you described it perfectly. It's like an addict. Mm. When they give you that time, attention, validation, it's like a hit, it's a high. And then when they don't, you're like crashing. Yeah. And you feel like you're having withdrawals. And what the addicts do, they're like, I need my next high. I need my next hit. Yeah. Now overall, the actual addiction itself is very unhealthy for the person. But compared to the person who who is an addict, maybe eats clean, works out clean, everything like that, right? They're a much healthier person, but they don't have highs and lows. Mm. And because of those, the highs, it's kind of like when you're with someone who wants to give you the level of treatment that you deserve, that you're looking for, it's meant to feel like that. It's not meant to feel like that because yeah. the lows is what makes the highs hit so hard. But when you're just doing that, you barely, you like, you barely feel yourself going up. But that's how the best relationships are created. Because what happens is people just doing that. It's like, okay, we're progressing, et cetera. And they keep doing that. And then just get to a point where they're so high. They're like, I didn't realize we were here. Mm. And that's the most amazing part. Because you're like, I've got this healthy relationship. I've just realized how amazing 
the thing that I have is. Yeah. And a lot of the time it's almost like a discovery. Like you discover that relationship that you've built with this person. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it's like building a wall. You're just putting a brick on one at a time. Right. And you're just enjoying it. And at some point, just look at it. Like, how did we build this wall of China? I feel like that's your situation. <laughs> hey, maybe we should get our own. Maybe get shot on. Um, You've gone through like a nice slow progress, haven't you? Does that make sense? Yeah. Whereas like the toxic is we build a brick and he, he like destroys it. He's like, fuck. And he's like, okay, babe, let's build. You're like, yeah, we're building this yeah, brick. Yeah. We're building this wall together. And he like crashes it again. You're yeah, like, yeah. Ah. Then you're building again. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and so that cycle can be very addictive for our dopamine. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I think a lot of time that's why you chase. So when you say you met a guy last year and he was giving you the right treatment, he treated you pleasantly, lovely and everything. And you're like, yeah, I just wasn't feeling it. Yeah, that's how it's going to feel. Yeah. That's how it's going to feel. Sometimes people in relationships and they'll be like, oh, I'm bored. I'm like, that means you're in a great relationship because <laughs> you're bored like yeah. if the worst if the if the worst thing about your relationship is you're bored you're in a great relationship because there are people out here who are cheating there are people out here who have had kids with somebody else there are people out here in abusive relationships like yeah. real shit when i say that it's taken me like a long time to heal and then throughout that process there have been a couple of guys that have kind of i, I haven't been able to heal properly because i've fallen back into those same patterns yeah but i also so this <laughs> Go on. i so i um obviously i don't i just do tiktok now but i i did used to do only fans okay um and i used to do like dominatrix stuff no i used way. to have like pay pigs and things like that Insane. but i feel like that kind of fell off the back of me being so angry at men <laughs> i had these so i started tiktok and then i had men messaging me saying oh if you abuse me <laughs> I'll pay you if you like just shout at me tell me I'm a loser and I was like you know what right now I hate men bring it give me the money I'll tell it's you a win -win. <laughs> and then yeah um and I did that for a while so when I said I did OnlyFans though like I didn't take like I did like lingerie pictures but I never like took all my clothes off and, sure. or anything like that yeah but um yeah so with these I basically feel like doing that was part of like the hurt me being like fuck you to the men your revenge yeah it was kind of my revenge and then I that's realized that's the sweetest revenge <laughs> like I can abuse you and you're gonna pay me for it yeah that's the sweetest but then I um September last year I decided I didn't want to do that anymore because it mm. actually really didn't go with my morals as a person mm. I'm not a mean person and I guess it was, I was acting. So so in, when I had these clients that wanted me to be horrible to them and pay yeah, me for it, yeah. it was, I was in full like actress mode. Mm. Um, but it just didn't sit right with me because mm. I'm not a horrible person. And I also have children. And even though they're really young at the moment, one day they're not going to be young anymore. And I didn't know how that was going to affect them in school, mm. things like that. So I thought, do you know what, like, I've had my fun with this. I've taken some of my shit out on these <laughs> poor men. <laughs> um, but now it's time to stop and focus on my TikTok path, which yeah. I'm so glad I, I did take that step. But yeah. yeah. I think um, in regards to, I completely get in terms of, it's so easy to get back into that cycle. Just like that habit of the roller coaster. Mm. Um, and first off, I want to say like, that's incredible awareness on your part to be like, even though you're benefiting from this dominatrix side, you will be like, this isn't actually healthy for my spirit because yeah. you know who you are. And you're like, while I enjoy indulging in this, this isn't, isn't actually good for me. It wasn't, it wasn't helping my healing journey at yes, all. It yes. was, it was kind of just keeping me there because I just constantly had this hatred for men. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Inside me. Like, 100%. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, but. No, go on. You, yeah, you go, that's you right. Go. <laughs> I want to ask a question. Um, how many guys do you think grab your attention out of 50? Grab my attention. Yeah, so I know you said you like a guy to be funny, but if you don't know he's funny, you have to choose him based on something else, right? 
Like, because like, you must have guys who ask you out all the time, but you only say yes to certain guys. Do you know what? Though? I don't. I actually don't. You don't people, say yes people, or you don't people, say No, people... Guys not sliding your DMs? Lies. Don't no, uh, guys... Guys... Not the sort of guys that I would go for, though. That's my point, though. Because <laughs> the issue is, it's not... The guys who are toxic, that's on them, right? I, I mean, I mean, attract... I mean, like, attraction-wise... Exactly. There's, you know, I, I'm going to look at your profile first and, and see if I, I'm, I'm not saying that I base it on people's looks because I don't, because I do like to get to know people's personalities. And some people, they could look, they could look like a God, right? But they start talking and, and then it, they've got such an ugly personality. It's just the biggest turn off. Yes. But you'd have to be like, there has to be some sexual attraction there to want to give them to message back so i get that so would it be a fair statement to say that the guys you've generally given a chance to were the guys you were most attracted to physically no that's no? actually no 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 that's actually not true because there there are some guys that i've like started talking to or been seeing or whatever that i wasn't sexually attracted to them straight away but i'd i'd met them Okay, let's let's come away from DMs. These are people that I've met out okay. or I've met through um my work like in in TikTok and stuff. So I've I've got to know them as a person first. When you say in TikTok. And then their personality has become attractive and then I've become sexually attracted to that attracted okay. to them. Cool. That and I'll probably say that's probably the best way. But when you say in TikTok, are they like other TikTokers with a level of influence and following? They do As live like streaming like me. So right, yeah. I, I so I do live streaming pretty much every day. I usually take one day off um, a week. So I'm constantly talking to other creators, going live with other creators, meeting yeah. new people all the time. Yeah. Um, some of them don't have the same following as me. Some of them some of them might have more, some of them might have less. Like it really I'm I'm not I don't base it on people's status, I guess. No, no, no. Yeah, status, yeah. But I guess <clears throat> what I'm saying is that if the fact that you keep choosing, because this may be hard to believe, but the majority of guys actually want a healthy relationship with a good woman. The majority of guys do. Where are, are they? Not <laughs> Where they're are the they? They're the guys approaching you that you probably say no to. This is what I'm trying to say. Mm. Everything. And this is not excuse any guys who's been, who've treated you poorly. That's completely on them. Shame on them for that. But if I told you, for example, three and 50 guys, right, give that level of toxicity and abuse to women, and you're telling me the past three guys have been those three, that's based on how you're choosing, yeah. not because that's the population. That's the same, when I talk to guys, sometimes I'll talk to a guy and he'd be like, yeah, most girls are just out here for attention and money, that's all they want. And I'm like, most women out here just looking for a good relationship. So if you're saying that half the women you've chosen, my guy, have been, you know, women looking for to spend an attention. It's because it's based on how you're choosing, yeah. not because that's a reflection of the large population. And so when I you say, I hear that right, I hear that right. And actually, this is what I was going to say, which I forgot. I was what I was going to say. Yeah, go for it. Obviously, being in the industry that I was in with the dominatrix stuff, majority of my clients had wives or girlfriends. Of course, or, I assumed that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. I think being in that industry and seeing the way that men work also because a, a massive platform of mine was Twitter. And yeah. when you're in that industry, madness comes up on your feed. Sure. I can so, imagine. <laughs> and then that then made me see the side of like porn and women and um, that was pretty crazy and made me think, oh my gosh, um, there is this, there is a whole other world out there that I feel like people don't know about sex and mm. the way that men's brains work. Mm. And um, it's, I feel like that gives me a big lack of trust as well in. Sure. Because I've learned a lot through. Because you've seen that side. Yeah. I, I, I 100%, I get that. But there's a selection bias in that because you were involved in an industry where it's going to attract those kinds of people. Mm. Like how many people do you think do dominatrix out of a hundred? <laughs> I don't know. You had to guess. I think 
Wait, are you talking about men or women? Like, uh, let's say men. Men that want to be dominated. Yeah. Like, like they would enter, they would pay for the service you used to provide. I have a hundred. Um, I don't know, maybe like five. So we already know it's like less than 10% of the population. But that's because that's I mean. a s specific fetish, right? But of then course. there's guys that want other, I don't know, what's a more common fetish like? I don't know. Feet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Feet is a big one. Feet is a big like, one. Stick your toe in my mouth. Okay, out of a hundred men, <laughs> what? How? What percentage of those men would want to look at feet? Probably like like pay for that. I'm gonna say yeah. like eighty percent. Probably eighty <laughs> percent. Maybe it is. You Guys could be love right. feet. I, think it is. <laughs> I, I guess what I, there's just a level of selection bias is just what I'm saying. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like so, like when I work with guys and stuff, like if they find that they're they're like, oh well, you know, I want I'm these girls that I've been dating, they just want money and attention. I'm like, okay, so which what kind of women are you dating? Well, you know, I'm dating like the Insta baddies, the only fan girls and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, you you came to me. When you first came to me, you're like, I'm looking for a wife who's got this quality, this quality, this quality. And I'm like, you're not choosing based on the qualities that you said that you wanted. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, but those girls, they just, you know, they just, they just don't do it for me. It's like, they're not spicy. You know, they're not out here arching their back and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, but that means you're choosing for something else. Mm. That's not saying you can't have a girl who has that, but if that's why you're choosing, like if that's why you're going a date with this person, then you're not choosing for the qualities that you say that you want. Yeah. And that's a really, and I've been guilty of that for sure. I've been guilty of, you know, choosing for the wrong reasons. And I didn't get, I mean, at the time, I guess I wasn't looking for a serious relationship, but then when looking for a serious relationship, you choose on different reasons. And actually for a lot of guys, the woman that they, and I get that. Cause I think there's a lot of messaging in our social media of women feeling like they have to be the most aesthetically pleasing woman out there yeah. right, to get the guy that she wants. I promise you, you really don't because if I'm being completely honest with you, for a lot of guys, especially the guys who are very desirable, a lot of the time, the woman that they actually get into a relationship, relationship with and commit to is not the most attractive girl that they've ever been with. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's because they choose for different reasons. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so if you're telling me you're choosing based on attraction, I'm like, well, of course you're choosing the fuck boys. The yeah. guys who aren't looking for anything serious. But I also think with social media, be, being in this industry of social media, it's like what I put on my page, my my social media page, I know a lot, people that aren't in that industry, they upload their life as it is, right? And they might upload the highlights and stuff. My Instagram is is my work page, really. Yeah. I upload the highlights of my life and stuff because that's what people want to see. Sure. But there's, so there's like social media Amelia and then there is actual Amelia. But I think that's mm. kind of the beauty of TikTok Live as well is that people do actually get to see who I am. Yeah, because when yeah. I'm on live, mm. I could be sitting there for six hours. I can't pretend to be somebody I'm not on there. Yeah. But I use my my profiles as a way to make money. So what I do upload is going to be different to what my actual life is. Of course. And so when some yeah. if somebody wants to get to know me based on my social media profile mm -hmm. that's not really me i mean i love to do all these like nice dinners and go to go out with my friends and things like that like, i do love that sort of stuff but actually if you want to get to know me i am a mum and my life is quite crazy if i'm not being a mum i'm working and if i'm not working i'm asleep which i don't get very little of like i've got a very busy life and mm. i do just want somebody that can accept that they're probably not going to be well they're definitely not going to be my priority because my children are first and foremost sure um and then obviously work as well is a massive pro like whoever comes into my life next needs to know that they're not going to be my sole priority i'll prioritize them of course sure but it's not gonna and if they want to look at my profile and think oh i like this girl based on everything she does and stuff like it's not all like happy all the time like there's a lot of stress behind my life so. yeah of course and i think people can make that misjudgment yeah. especially of like people on social media and influence in that sense um 
but it is important to recognize that the energy we put out is the energy the universe will bring back to us. Yeah. Um, and this is where I was saying like the energy that you go for that is only going to return that kind of energy back to you. Um, and that goes, goes for, for, and I'm talking on the initial attraction. Do you know what I mean? Just, just the initial attraction. Um, when it comes to like the red flags that you said you kind of ignored, tell me some of those things that you recognize now. And was it that you would, you saw those red flags in the beginning, but you ignored it? Or is it in hindsight, you were like, that was a red flag. Like that was that. You see what I'm saying? Um, it's like the little gaslighting things. There was there was there was a situation with a guy where literally in the first couple of weeks, he'd started an argument. I can't actually think like what it was based on. He started an argument and was trying to make everything my fault. And I was a bit like, and it, and it made me cry. And that was two weeks into talking to this person. And I was like, how has he managed to make me cry in the first two weeks? But I'm also still a bit like, okay, I'm, I'm going to see where this goes though. I don't know. Like, why did I ignore that first? And then it actually turned out like the more we spoke, like he just kept trying to start arguments all the time. And I'm like, I'm not about negative vibes. Like I want to just be happy and have fun and things like it so, just felt like he kept trying to pick at me for things make me feel a certain way almost like not my confidence a bit with things like mm. if I'd posted something he would say something about like the way I looked or oh why why are you posting this why are you posting that and it's like well this is my page this is my career like I know what my viewers like and so what why did you stay because that was happening in the beginning but you continued on what it was you it was looking back it was the idea of what i thought it could be but what, why did you have that idea about him he's he's in the same industry as me and there were things that we'd spoken about where i were, we were in very like similar situations and i thought like oh maybe he gets me like that and he understands my lifestyle because i understand his and I think I just kind of made it up in my head that like we could have something great here if we work on it. So I thought he was also very physically attractive. <laughs> so that was like a, a quite a big thing. You see? <laughs> you see? Do you see um, what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have a lot more power and agency than you realize. A lot more. Mm. And when you said, that's why when you said in the beginning of this conversation, like, you know, they choose me. I was like, no, nah, you're choosing them. Yeah. Because they might pursue you. But, but there are many guys who are but pursuing I do think, you. But I do think that's why I feel like it's 50-50 because I will take responsibility for the fact that I have allowed men in my life. If, if to, Listen, if, if they abuse you, if they give you abuse, that's completely on them. That's not even you. That's yeah. on them. There's, cer there's certain situations that I've been in where like, it's really not, it's not my fault. Sure. I've been, I've been so in love and I've done nothing but give them my absolute all. And they chose to betray and gaslight. And like, I've been in a, a very emotionally abusive relationship. I'm talking about like the lip, just the little ones that have happened. Yeah. yeah that, of course. Like the little ones. I probably have allowed them to treat me in certain ways. And I know I shouldn't have, um, and maybe that was just because I was uh, like making an idea of what I thought it could be and just get, ignoring. No, I, I get that. I think what's happening, I think what's happening though is I think, and correct me if I'm wrong. It sounds like you're like, okay, the reason this guy treated me badly was because I allowed him to, I didn't have, I didn't block him here. I didn't block him here. Right. And that's not what I'm saying because what happens now is because you've got these blocks now you don't let any guy penetrate mm. right the bad but you're also stopping the good it's not about having blocks to stop someone of course like if someone does you wrong and someone's abusive you get out of that situation but it's not about having mental and emotional blocks so somebody can't have a hold on you or can't have that level of pull on you 
because it means that that means you stop the bad guys getting in but you also stop the good guys getting in it's about choosing the right person where you don't have to have those blocks yeah because they want to look after you they look after your mental space your emotional space and they want to reciprocate what it is like what you're giving them mm. and so i think part of where I, maybe you feel like you're stuck is because you're like I feel that I don't have this level of, I don't get the high from the guys who maybe would treat me really well. But then the guys that I do get the high from can't be trusted. Yeah. Yeah. And what I'm saying is, if we're going to stop being addicts, we have to stop looking and craving for that high. Yeah. That, that's what's get tripped. I feel up. like that's where I'm at now though. I'm like, I, I, I've noticed the patterns mm. of the men that I choose that, I get hurt by and I've noticed like where it goes wrong and stuff and then obviously like I do take responsibility for the fact that I have maybe allowed them to treat me in certain ways but I do also feel like because I am I'm a very like open person I'm quite a vulnerable person but like over time I've learned that my vulnerability is strength in a certain like it takes courage to be vulnerable yeah for sure um but also I have been massively hurt because of that. Mm. I'm, I'm, I guess a bit too forgiving sometimes. And I'm, I've learned that I, I've le learned how to put boundaries in place and stuff now to protect my energy. Um, like what? Can you give me an example? I guess just like if, if somebody gives me a red, red flag now, like I'm like, okay, I'm, no, like that's not really putting a boundary in place though, is it? Mm. I'll, I'll tell you a situation where I really, so it was a year after I broke up with the father of my children mm. and I'd met somebody that I really liked. I really took a liking to. Um, how did you and then him? it became evident. How did I meet him? Mm -hmm. Through Instagram. Okay. Through the DMs. Um, okay. So you saw, <laughs> but he, he was from my you, area. So like liked. other people, I had mutual friends with him and stuff. So I thought like, I, I got a bit of background first. I asked around, I said, what's this guy like? And um, but he was, I mean, he was everyone kind of gave me the, the he, he was attractive. He was very yeah. attractive. Got you. Um, I ended up starting to really like him and then it did just end up being a casual situation. And I felt like I was just getting picked up and put down and stuff. But, Again, I probably did allow him to treat me that way. Um, and then there was this one time that at this time, like I was still really healing from everything from my previous relationship. And I was unaware of how to set boundaries and stuff. And I was trying to teach myself how to say no to things and um he came over and I said like I didn't want to do anything like I just wanted to chill with him and he just kept repeatedly asking me to do a sexual favor for him and I said no and I remember thinking in my head this is your moment now to really mm. set that boundary and say no mm. um and I even said to him and I like, looked him down the eye and I said I'm asking you to respect my boundaries like please don't ask again mm. But he didn't stop and he kept going um, and then promising things that were going to happen after I did it. And I feel like I was sexually coerced into doing something that I didn't actually want to do. Mm. Um, How long did you date him after that? <laughs> so after that happened, he then actually ghosted me uh, for, for a while. I think it was like a couple of months later, he decided to like start calling me ringing me rah, rah, rah. but I still liked it I don't know why I feel like it's a bit of a stupid situation for me like I feel embarrassed about it mm, yeah. um but I just remember like when he left I felt very violated and I was I was angry at myself at first because I was like you you couldn't even do like you couldn't just stick to your own boundaries like what, like you're so stupid. Blah, blah, blah. But mm. then I realized that actually it was quite a severe situation that like I had voiced multiple times that I didn't want to and that I did put that boundary in place. So 
So I feel like I'm getting a bit off there. No, no, 100%. Um, 100%. But I feel like that to me is is a time where I, I have set a firm boundary and it was still violated. And then I think after that was when I realized like, if I don't want to do something or I don't want to be in a situation, I need to learn how, like, I have to now say no. I really have to, like, what I should have done is I should have said, like, get out of my house. Ask again and you'll, you will you can leave. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But I did make it so clear. I, I, I remember saying specifically, like, respect my boundaries. I'm telling you no. 100%. <sighs> If you're loving this episode and these kinds of conversations, then I wanna give you something. We recently launched the Kits Angels community. This is a sisterhood for women who are tired of what the dating scene has given them and are ready to take their love lives to the next level. It's a space for you as a woman to not be alone in your journey to love where we learn, talk, and share our experiences as part of a strong sisterhood with some leadership and guidance from yours truly, of course. Not to mention never before seen videos from me on how I've led dozens of women to meeting great men. And so as a thank you for watching this episode i'm giving you a month's membership completely complimentary on me just click the kits angels link below and when you join the group message me the code phrase angels podcast and i will pay for your membership now back to the episode so i completely get that and it definitely sounds like you were coerced yeah in that situation i want i will not offer you an alternative shift to that situation because the self-talk that you did about oh it's my fault it's because i didn't say no etc was not your fault Mm -hmm. the focus shouldn't be on you it should be on him what the mentality from that and the understanding of what happened there was this is a man who does not respect my boundary yeah this is a man who doesn't take no for an answer. This is a man that I cannot feel safe with. When you start having that shift of mindset, there is no freaking way you are seeing him again. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I did, put, I did, do that I did get to that point. So I think we met up a couple of times after that still, because I still had feelings there. And then there was this time I think he was trying to message me, trying to come and see me for those reasons. And I said, and this is actually the last time I spoke to him, but I I said, I don't really fancy being coerced into doing something I don't want to do again. And he completely flipped it on me. You're more of a psycho than I thought you were. How could you make such a disgusting lie up about me? I've I've never told I've actually never told anybody this <laughs> to this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, it, like he basically said that I that's a disgusting lie to make up about somebody. It could um. It could ruin his reputation, and that he basically thought I was sick in the head for even saying that he did that. Right. So and then he blocked me, and I'm I'm glad he did because I did. I I I've, I haven't I haven't spoke to him since and I, and I'm now at a place where I would never speak to him again mm. and I, and I have a clearer head and I know what he did was wrong but at the time when I was emotionally invested there was still this little part of me that I was like okay well maybe it maybe it was my fault mm. like I still blamed myself a bit and I still wanted him to be the good person but now I know he's not the good person and I would never give that chance again yeah. Yeah, of course. But I had to come out of that situation. It had to take for him to block me, for me to realize, okay, shit, he like, I actually, it actually wasn't my fault. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think part of that's like part of the vetting process to see what type of man you're with is. So like, there's obviously the type of guy you would ideally, I'm assuming want to choose is that we go, Hey, like I really don't want to do anything. He's like, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Hmm. But if a guy's like very pushy and stuff, so you, in the situation of what happened then, that was completely on him for sure. And I understand as a woman, when you feel vulnerable, you might, let me give him what he wants because I don't know how he's going to respond if I don't. So I understand that. But it's the after seeing him, that's when you, for you, would just should have been like, I can't trust this guy. 
Do you know mm. what I mean? And this do you wanna, is. Do you want to actually know something that's yeah, like really it. like kind of um, is it you saying about like a, if if I, if I say no to something and a guy says, oh, "Okay, that's cool," you would be very surprised by. I, I think there's only been two guys that I've ever said. I don't want to do it tonight or whatever to. Mm -hmm. And they've actually said, oh, that's fine. I respect that. And what about that? Do you other guys though? Like mm -hmm. from my own experience, most guys won't take no for an answer the first time. They have to try and it's, and uh, especially if they've already had you, they think that they're entitled to, uh, they're like, oh, we've already done it before. But it's like, but, or for them. Like maybe I just I just don't want to do it right now. A hundred percent. Or it's because they come around for that reason. Yeah. And in terms of, you know, if a guy's attracted to you and stuff, like he's gonna try it, right? Yeah, yeah. But in terms of when you're saying only two guys you've been with have respected the boundary that you've set, that you just didn't want to in that time. But then the other guys have, and if you've continued seeing them, that is a very big part of what is hurting you now that's keep that's stopping you from healing yeah or that has got you to a point where you feel like you can't get anyone in because like i know for, like i have two younger sisters i know for a fact if any guy didn't respect that i'd be like that's obviously a guy you can't choose because that means your well-being is not a priority of his when you're together yeah and it should be especially as the man because a lot of time the guy we're physically stronger right so and the reason I'm saying this, and this isn't this isn't me saying what happened is your fault, absolutely not. But it's so you don't get to a point that you don't open yourself up to anyone because I promise you, when you open up and you have that with the right person, my gosh, it's like life-changing. Mm. Like it's so beautiful. And you'll be like, I cannot believe, like when you have that, you'll be like, I cannot believe the men I chose. Like yeah. you're like, I can't believe it. Like this is what I was missing out on the whole time because I thought he was super attractive. Yeah. I, like it's it's life changing for sure. Do you know what I mean? I think with the guys who, like with the guy that maybe you like, you didn't feel it with, how long were you dating him for? This this was the guy last year, right? Yeah. How long were you dating um, him for? Like a month. So not very long. <laughs> yeah, no, but like it was it wasn't so very long, long, but like I I did give it we we saw each other like quite a lot in that month. Yeah. Um we went on a few dates and then sometimes we'd just chill. Um yeah, like it, I don't know. What was it? Why did you say <laughs> wait, why did you say yes to go on a date with him and then why did you call it off? Because I know you called it off. <laughs> <laughs> why why did I say yes to go on a date? So we actually met on Hinge. Um very attractive guy. He very easy. Mina, you're the killing eyes. me. He was attractive and he, he treated you great. <laughs> what are you doing? He actually was like really attractive. <laughs> but um and then straight away he was like he was like I don't like to do all this like pen pal stuff. I'd rather just take you out. I was like, okay. That's confidence. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of guys in this generation ask people out on dates either. I, I don't know. Like maybe I'm just picking the wrong men. No, but I, <laughs> um, I find that guys don't really want to do dates anymore. They rather... don't want to do dates or? As in they don't want to go out. They just want to chill. 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 <laughs> or they'll say, this, is, this has happened a couple of times. Um, they'll say like, oh, well, actually it's happened a few times, but. I've allowed it to happen twice and then I learned my lesson. Yes. But um, guys will often be like, okay, we're going to do this on the weekend. Um, be ready by this time. We're going to this place. So they arrange the whole date. And then it comes to like Thursday, Friday. And they're like, oh, I've had such a shit week at work. Um, maybe we could just chill. Like, I just, I just need to relax. And then me just being like the kind person I am I'm like cause put your feet up naive I'll make person us, I'll make you us are. dinner <laughs> I'll make us dinner you is this the first date up. yeah uh, I, I quickly learned that it was a tool to just get around my house I have, a, I have a question if that was an average looking guy like if you were like let, okay let's say this an average looking guy so he's not unattractive to you but you don't look at him and you're like right mm. he asks you out and you're like 
not usually what I'll go for, but let me try and be a bit more open. And then he like says, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this, etc." He plans the date. And then it gets like the day before, two days before, whatever. And he's like, I've had a really knackered week or whatever. Like, I'm really sorry. Can we just chill? And let's say this was you back then. Would you have been like, yeah, no problem. Come over, I'll cook dinner. Would you have done that still? Yeah, if if like, because I mean, like, I wouldn't let somebody come around my house if I haven't talked to them for a bit. Like, it's it's not like somebody would message me one day and then they're coming around the next. No, no, Do you know course. what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah, so if yeah, I if course. I've built up like that, oh, I I like this person. I'd I, I want to get to know this person. Then yeah. Okay, I see. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, don't do that with any guy ever. <laughs> Not for a first date. Well, yeah, I I learned I learned my lesson. Like one guy did it to me. He was like, oh. Yeah, um, I've had a really shit week at work. Like, can we just chill tonight? And I'm like, yeah, you know. To be fair, though, that guy, like, I actually had, I've been friends with him for for years, so I kn I knew him. Oh, so okay. it wasn't like having a stranger around my house. Like, yes. we we'd actually known That's each other for years, and then, um, it we just we hadn't seen each other for a few years. I guess he had a glow up, and I was like, okay, like, <laughs> come on through, boy. We, we um, could, so that, we that was that, that was a bit of a different situation. And then there and then there was another guy that did it, and he was. Yeah, he was like, oh, we're going to go here on Saturday or whatever. And then on Friday, he was like, oh, like I've just had a really shit week at work. Like maybe we could chill. And I was thinking, oh, well, I still want to meet him because I've like kind of had it in my head all week that I'm going to meet you. Yeah. So I thought, oh, do you know what? He can just come around. I'll cook us dinner or whatever. La, la, la. Um, but then I realized like it was just because he wanted one thing and not. So here's, here's, here's the other thing I want us to address because I think from a few of the situations you've said, I'm seeing a very common thing that it's easy for women to fall into nowadays in terms of things being casual. Mm -hmm. How quickly do you sleep with these guys? When do you sleep with them? I, I honestly think it's a mixture. Okay. Because I've done the thing where you wait it out. What does that and look like you, to you? You make, you make them wait. What does that look like to you making them make? Uh, is it like you talk for a few weeks before meeting with them is that making them wait no like meet up with them a couple of times few times before you you give you give it to them mm. um but then the outcome's still been the same as people that i've slept with the first time i've met them mm. so here's the next part which is when you start sleeping with them, how many how many dates do you continue to have? When I say dates, I mean where you spend time with them where sex is off the table. Or does it become more, come over and chill, I'll cook dinner and you come to mine and we'll chill and maybe we'll go crazy golf, but it's right near your house. How many dates do you have after that? Not a lot. That's why. Men don't invest in their Men invest in their emotional time and women invest in their sexual time. So if we know women invest in their sexual time, but men invest in their emotional time or rather their non-sexual time. So for you, maybe a guy coming over and you cooking dinner and stuff, you cuddling on the sofa watching a film and spending a night together. For you, you're like, yeah, I'm investing in you because we're spending time, you're spending night, etc. That's not investing for him. Okay. Because he's coming over, yeah, to spend some time with you, but also to be intimate with you. Mm. So when he's spending time with you where sex is on the table, that's not him investing because I promise you, before he even gets to your door, he is thinking about having sex with you that yeah. night. It's when you meet up for lunch and then you go your separate ways. Because at lunch, you're just having some yeah. food, you're just having a conversation. But I, I feel like guys never actually ask me to do things like that and when I ask them there's always an excuse for why they can't so here's what I was saying the first thing is a guy asking you to just come over why he would take that that's actually a test okay and he may not even he may not it may he may not be thinking consciously this is a test but I want you to think of it this way you've got the fuck boy side of him and the boyfriend side of him the fuck boy just was a hook up. He's not looking to invest in anyone seriously. The boyfriend is like, I want to invest in this person because I care about them and I want to build a future with them. Him asking you 
to just come over and chill. Let's just chill and do that, right? That's the fuck boy asking, but it's a test from the boyfriend side because the boyfriend side is going to go, is going, I want to choose a girl who's going to require a level of investment from me because mm. that's the girl that I respect and that's the girl that gets my commitment. Now, if you say yes to those times, the fuckboy side is going to be like, yeah, I'll take it every time. Like she's attractive. I'm attracted to her. We can, you know, have fun together, of course. But then the boyfriend goes, okay, cool. This isn't the woman for me. Yeah. So it's really important as the woman. I get you're like, oh, but guys don't ask me. So it's like, if they're only asking me to come over and chill and that's the only time I can spend with them, what am I supposed to do? Well, then what I'm trying to say is if a guy's only going to do that with you, especially if you try and go on a proper date, go out and do something and he always finds an excuse where he can't do that. Mm. What that tells you is that guy is only interested in you for something casual. Yeah. And then, I think, so I, I think that's, I think that's that where I like massively like struggle then. And I think a reason why I've become switched off mm. from men recently is that I do, I know that a lot of them do just see me for one thing and I don't want to just be that one thing. Of course. So like by not entertaining men, I'm stopping that from happening. That's kind sure. Of my... <laughs> and, and I completely get that, but you're also stopping the other thing from happening from a guy looking at you and being like, this is an incredible woman that I want to build a future with. Yeah. So, and I say this with love, you know me, right? Most of the time when a girl is in a casual position in a man's life, it's because she put herself there. It's not because, now it can be the case where a guy's only open something casual if mm -hmm. he's not ready for something serious, but then if he's not ready for something serious, she wouldn't be there in the first place. Yeah. She wouldn't, like, she wouldn't become a casual option because she'd be like, okay, cool. You're not looking for something serious to reciprocate the same thing. Cool. I wish you all the best, but I'm on my way. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? And so part of that, and the reason I say that, the reason I'm saying as a woman, you have the power is because when it comes to sex, as the woman, you have the power. And that's the initial reason why guys take an interest. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? So a lot of the time it's, how you date a guy is it kind of i hear what you're saying i do Go on. but i kind of feel like there's just a bit of a double standard with it all though like why is it okay for a guy to think that they can sleep with women whenever first date things like that and um, but they're still like a a high valued person but if a woman does it it's they're not. Does that make sense? What, well, as in, uh, wait, why is it if a guy sleeps around, it's he he's like um, congratulated for that, but if like a woman why, does it. Yeah, like why is it less, val like why are women like seen as not valued as much because they have a higher sex drive or whatever? Uh, so it's not about the sex drive because it's, it's about, um, well, because when it comes to power, women have the sex. When it comes to sex, sex women have, have the power. power. <laughs> when it comes to sex, women have the power. Because, okay, we know nine times out of 10, let me ask you, if a man and woman have sex, who said yes? Um, the woman? The woman? Yeah. Because the guy who was trying to convince you to have sex with him, right? Yeah. The woman says yes. But a lot of the time, if a guy and girl becomes become exclusive, who said yes then? The guy? Usually, yeah. Usually the woman wants to become exclusive sooner yeah, than the usually guy. usually us that's like, okay, so what is this? Right, yeah. exactly, right? Women are the gatekeepers for physical intimacy, but men are the gatekeepers for emotional intimacy and commitment, mm. right? So when a guy and a girl have sex, it's because she said yes. But when a guy and girl become exclusive, it's usually because he said yes. Yeah. So if you have a woman, her say, you saying yes to a guy, it doesn't validate you, it validates him. Because the example I give is kind of like, imagine if you as a woman are the employer and the guy is a candidate to potentially become an employee. Yeah. If you have a candidate 
who's going around and he's getting job offer from this company, job offer from this company, job offer from this company. It's like, oh, he's a valuable candidate because he's getting offers left, right and center. But if you have a company, they're offering a job to this person, they're offering a job to this person, they're offering a job to this person. That company doesn't seem as a high value company because they're just offering jobs out to almost, obviously not everyone, but they're offering a lot more jobs out. Part of the reason why Oxford and Cambridge is high is valued so highly is because it's very difficult to get in. Yeah. Because they say yes, whether you attend. Do mm. you know what I mean? They're not saying, hey, come to my school. They're like, you're applying to come to you're applying to come to this school. Yeah. So like when a guy approaches you as a woman, he's applying to be like, am I a good enough candidate for you to be intimate with me? And you say yes or no. Mm. And that's why it's different. Because the woman has, has the power when it comes to sex. I'm not saying it's fair, but that's why. But this is why I'm saying with that power, you have way more agency than you realize. Because you can decide whether it goes serious or whether it goes casual. Yeah. And it's how you use that power. And I think the danger is in the modern kind of culture and this emphasis on kind of hookup culture and treating sex casually, it encourages women to misuse their power in a way that actually really only serves the masculine imperative, which is to be able to have sex with little investment. Yeah. Because what happens is like, for example, like I'm sure you have guys who are friends with you who probably want you, but you just don't want them, right? Yeah. <laughs> she does. Look at that face. No, She's like, I, have, I, I know I, exactly I actually have, which one. I have one friend in particular. Sure. But I, I am so honest with him all the time that like it's never going to happen in that way and sure he's, and he still tries, he's a right? very he, he's a very interesting character anyway mm -hmm. so, but yeah he does he does every time i i'm you're always honest with him right i i'm always i always say you're like a brother to me you're like and he's like oh why would you have to say that he's like step bro i'm like no no <laughs> He's trying and to I'm enter that even, category, not even set, bro. You're just my He's brother. Trying to enter that You're just category. my friend. He's like, I swear, if you ever set, he'll call me your friend again. And I'm like, so what's this is? So this is what? What's his inner dialogue? What do you mean by that? When you say to him, "Oh no, you're just a friend," but he still continues to try and push it there. What's his inner dialogue to do that? Why does he feel like he still stands a chance? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, like, what does he tell himself? Why does he continue to try? It's the exact same in a dialogue that you because, have. I guess because he really likes me. Yeah, but remember what you told me when when I when you said a guy says to you, "Oh, this is just something chilled." What did you say to that? I can't remember what did I say. <laughs> You're like, well, if I spend more time with him, then maybe I oh, can yeah, change his mind. Oh yeah, then I can change. Yeah. He's like, well, if I spend yeah. more time with her, then maybe I can change her mind. mind. Has that changed your but, mind? No, but then we because exactly. we're in we're in the same industry. We, we have the same friendship group. That's fine. We do see, a, we do see each other a lot because of that. Mm. Like it's, um, I feel like if we weren't in the same friendship group, I wouldn't, I wouldn't see him. Yeah, of course. But what I'm trying to say is like, you've, so it, you've just, said no. I get into like situations, like we never just meet up just us two. Sure. Cause I, I don't think I, I couldn't do that to him anyway, because I know that he has feelings for me. But mm. obviously we do fall into these situations where we're around each other a lot because we have the same group of friends. And yeah. then it's just always the same thing. He's always trying to flirt saying like, he'd marry me tomorrow and things like that. And you don't even realize how much of a queen I treat you. And, and I'm sure he would, but he, again, he's a very interesting character. And um, <laughs> there's, there are, I ha I know my reasons for why I don't, see him in that way yeah, and it's fine. not even just like it's not physically attract physical attraction either like there are just a lot of things that i just wouldn't he's just not for me in that way sure but i have told him that does that um i get that does that not saying this would make you attracted to him but does that level of treatment that you know he would give you, that he wants to give you, that he's showing himself to try and give you, does that make him a more attractive prospect, even if you would still say no? Or does it not change that level of attraction? Uh, what do you mean? I don't. 
you so mean? let's say for example let's say um I'm, I'm saying this bit of being very arbitrary but let's say for example um let's say you're going to rate someone out of 100 and for you to choose them they have to be an 80 out of 100 right mm -hmm. that's the pass mark for you let's say based on just who he is when you look at him knowing him let's say that makes him a 45 i'm asking you does him want to give you the right level of treatment him want to treat you like a queen give you all this stuff that you say you want does that make him go from a 45 to maybe a 65 you know it's still a no or does it have zero impact on his level of attraction to you in like your rating it has zero impact okay that's a big issue because a lot of time when we've come for a place of healing someone wanting to treat us right should make them more attractive to us yes yeah but i i, I mean i don't and I, someone I, who I, I doesn't want to pieces, so i don't want i don't want to disrespect him no um, of course i'm not talking about him in general yeah no but i i do feel like in this certain scenario it's just a bit different maybe maybe we take him out and, and we just put like this into a general situation so as a general situation sure but i i think i think that's very much the case even the opposite because what happens is let's say you have a guy and let's say he's an 85 so he's past the mark he's attractive you have that chemistry and stuff but he treats you poorly that should make him go from 85 to a 65 yeah and but now that, i feel like I, it I, and now i feel like it would for me because i i am at a point where i'm i'm not allowing people to treat like i there have been circumstances where i've started talking to guys right. and they've shown me even a little hint of what the other guys did and i'm like no this so, isn't for me so i get that i think we have to i'm it's not i'm saying it's right to be to be more discerning a hundred percent but we have to be careful to not make like a tornado out of a fan <laughs> mm. well a, a good example is uh last week some guys said in my dms and uh we we were like flirting a bit and whatever and then i said like it, i think he made some kind of innuendo of some sort mm -hmm. and i said oh well you'll have to take me out first and then he beat round the bush and didn't say anything about taking me on a date but swerved it and avoided it. And to me, that's him basically saying, I'm not going to take you on a date. So for what, what me, I then say? stopped. What did he say? What, what, like when you say he swerved around it, what did you say to that? When you said you have to take me on a date? Um, I can't think off the top of my head. <laughs> I can't <laughs> think off the top of my head exactly what he said, but I said, you'll, you'll have to take me out first. And then he basically just avoided that I said that. And then carried on with other conversation or what and then that to me was like okay. if he wanted to take me out he would be like when are you free sure Very I, true. I kind of put that i put that out there i kind of put the olive branch out there yeah, yeah and yeah. he didn't he avoided it and and that's happened before and i've made mistakes so to me that was and it's and then throughout the chat i think there was another time again where i hinted about meeting up outside of not coming over. So I, I wonder how you said that. And it's really important when I say how, because depending on, I get that sometimes it's good to set a standard for sure. But sometimes it can come across as, I'm setting this standard from a place of hurt. And that can make a guy go, she has issues. Okay. Because there's a way to Okay, there, well, it. there's been a situation before where a guy he lived locally to me and he was like, oh, I'm near the gym by yours. It was like quite late at night. He was like, are the kids asleep? I was like, yeah, but I don't have men around my house while my kids are asleep. And he was like, oh, it'll be fine. Like if they're asleep or like he tried to then, like he didn't kind of take that no for an answer. And I was like, we haven't, you haven't even taken me out on a date yet. Um, And then he was like, yeah, um, soon, soon. But didn't say when, didn't ask me when I'm free. Or, and I just thought, you know what, like, I can tell that you just want one thing. And yeah, hundred percent. It it was a turn off. It was an ick. It was like yeah, that's right. Uh, I think you handled that great. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I think it's like, I think it's always good to set a boundary from a place of positive. So instead of so, like for example, sometimes you know, 
maybe someone will put in their dating profile. Not looking for hookups. If yeah. you're looking for one night stands, don't, don't swipe me. Yeah. <laughs> that does no favors to you because the guys who are just looking for something. Wait, carry- how? That's, that's somebody like saying like, I don't, can't people just respect that boundary? I don't know. I'll, I'll you- I don't personally do that. I'm not on dating apps anymore because I just hate them, but. Sure. The reason that doesn't work is because one, the guys who are just looking for something casual, they've already swiped on you because they think you're attractive. They're not in read your bio. Yeah. So they've already swiped. What, guys right don't read you. bios? Not really. They're not, <laughs> a guy's not going to think a girl's really hot. No, but let me rephrase. A guy's not going to be, see a girl and he's be like, oh, I don't really find her attractive, but her bio is amazing. So I'm going to swipe on her. No, it doesn't happen. See, that's, I feel like that's what girls do. We look sure. at, we look at guys, we say, we think, oh, he looks attractive. And then you read his bio and you're either going to be like, narcissist <laughs> it's usually the ones holding a puppy or a baby <laughs> god damn um <laughs> neither, neither you, of them are you're his. gonna see it or <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna see it and think oh yeah he's a bit of me but you can kind of tell when somebody like really loves themselves because i don't know their profile will kind of show that mm. and they're sort of the sort of people that like People, it's okay to be proud of your success and stuff, but I think there's some people that are like, I'm this, I'm that, rah, 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 I've got this amount of money. And nine mm. times out of 10, they actually don't have all these things. They just hype themselves up to be somebody yeah, that true. they're not. That's true. But yeah, the, but yeah, guys don't do that. Mm. Like the reason saying that no, no hookups or no one night stands on your dating profile, the reason that doesn't work is because the guys who are just looking for something casual have already swiped on you. Yeah. Right? Because they think you're hot. They're like, oh, she's hot. Cool, swipe right. The guys who are looking for something genuine, all you're communicating to them is, I have scars and I'm not over it. Mm. Interesting. So a better way to say it would be like, looking for a guy who's looking to explore, to Looking for a guy to explore life with and have a genuine connection with. P.S. I like pizza. Let's do something that first. Yeah. Yeah. You're coming from a place of positive, not negative. It's like a guy going, not looking for girls who just want guys with money and who are looking at me to splash out on the first date. You've and just, You've just made me, you've just reminded me of like the first time I went back on Hinge after breakup with the father of my children. And I think every like uh, prompt was something to do with, it was like, uh, what do you look for in a man? Somebody that doesn't gaslight me. <laughs> what do you, I, I, th- there couldn't be more like, okay, this girl's full of trauma um, <laughs> written on my dating and thing profile. Is the, <laughs> and thing is the guy, the guy who is going to be bringing something healthy to you, he's going to be like, this is a lot a of broken, work. This is a broken woman and I'm not looking. Yeah. He's like, because, so basically what he's, what he's see what he's seeing, he's like, so basically what you're saying is for us to get to a point where you can trust me, I have to undo the damage the previous guy did. Yeah. Why would I, why would I sign myself up for that? For sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I even feel like I, I'm, I've always been a massive fixer. I've always wanted to fix people. I hear their, I hear their sad story and I think, oh my gosh, this poor person, I want to be the person that turns your life around, makes you I, I'm quite motherly in that way. Mm. Well, I was. Um, That's probably a very attractive quality think, about you for guys, for sure. Like yeah, the nurturing but, but aspect. Then, but, yeah. then I, but then I feel like that hasn't worked out for me because they have wanted, they've wanted that from me and drained all my energy in the process. And I hear that. Just take, take, take. So but having that no, is good. You just have to give it to the right guy. Yeah. What what we don't want to happen is we don't want you giving the right treatment to the wrong guy mm. for you to then give the wrong treatment to the right guy. Interesting, because I was just about to say I feel like now I'm not looking to fix anybody anymore. I don't think, you and should I'm be not asking someone. anyone to come in and fix me because I've done the work in myself. I like I have, I do feel like I've reached a point now where. I don't need somebody. I think I craved at first mm. somebody to come into my life and love me the way that I deserved, which I'm still looking for, but I, I kind of wanted them to pick up the pieces that somebody else had broken. Mm. But I, I've I've done that by myself now. I so I'm so. not looking for somebody to come in and do that. I'm just looking for. I think that's good because to... no one can do that. Yeah. The only person who can do that for yourself is you because all will happen is if i've got certain 
issues because of my past experiences and you're like, oh, I love you so much, Kia, you know, and take care of in that sense. I just try and hand that responsibility to, to you. And that's a never ending battle mm. because you can't force me to heal. Yeah. No matter how secure you make me, no matter how, how much you reassure me, it's, it's going to come up in the relationship from a trauma response from me. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. We are the only people who can do that for ourselves. Now, can someone else actually support us? A hundred percent. Yeah. Can someone else be there for us and reassure us? A hundred percent. But that's our own work. Mm. Do you know what I mean? One hundred percent. Um, the last thing I want to say is, and this is the one thing I want you to take away from okay. our conversation today, is next time you start dating a guy. And this is part of how you vet men, vet men who are intentional. I want you to really prioritize as much non-sexual time with him as much as the sexual time with him. What counts as non-sexual time is where sex is off the table. So him having dinner with yours doesn't count. Yeah. You going for crazy golf, golf and then going back to his because it's around the corner doesn't, doesn't count. count. I'm talking about maybe you go for lunch, maybe you go for a walk and then you go your separate ways. Yeah. Maybe you do grab some food, but then you've got somewhere to be after and he knows that. So he knows you're not coming back to his. And you don't have to say, hey, just so you know, I've got a girlfriend's thing, so I'm not coming back to yours. You just say, <laughs> he's like, hey, hey, Amelia, what are you doing Friday? You're like, oh, hey, um, I'm free between seven and nine um, for dins, but mm. then I'm going to my girlfriend's after that. Would love to see yeah. you in that time. Would love to see you beforehand. And if he's actually serious about getting to know you, he's going to be like, great. Mm. let's meet here but if he's like oh okay cool no worries i'll see you another time and it's like you had a two-hour chance you you had a chance to spend two hours to, with, me, with me and you said and no you didn't prioritize it so you said no like, now if he's like because he's got something on that's different but if he's asked you what you're doing he's obviously free that night you see what i'm yes. saying yes this yes and i've never thought of it like that especially and this is in this is especially important when you start having sex Mm. not before because what can happen is guys will put in the work to get to the point that you're being physically intimate then they stop in the work it's like cool i've done that work now that's my investment done yeah right it's from the point you start having sex and i would never recommend sleep on the first date i would never recommend it but even if you have sex on the first date still make sure to prioritize non-sexual time as much as the sexual time so if the last time you were eating popcorn around here's watching Netflix and you stayed over and you slept together. Then next time you see each other has to be something where you're not going to have sex. Yeah. And then the time after that, maybe you spend the night time after that, something that's not going to be physical early on because mm. what this does for him, there's two prongs for this. What it does for him is it goes, it reinforces the fact that you require a level of emotional intimacy to connect physically. And that's what makes a girlfriend. That's what makes yeah. a partner. That's what makes a wife. But what it also does for you is that any guy who is not intentional about having a relationship, he will not do that with you. And the guys who are intentional would be like, that's they absolutely no problem. They will prioritize like even just spending a spare hour with you if it, it means that they're not gonna have sex with you. Right. Now, how do you handle it when you start having sex with a guy, but then all he offers is Netflix and chill? How do you handle that? Because you're like, well, if I can't do that, if I say no and I don't see him, do you know what I mean? The best way to offer that is, let's say last time you spent around here and it was Netflix and chill. And next time he's like, hey, like, why don't I come over? We can watch a film, I'll do us dinner. You'd be like, wow, that sounds really lovely. I'd really love for us to have an afternoon together, just you and me. Yeah. Because you know what as well? It's like being, being a mum, I am in my flat. I am at home a lot mm -hmm. because I've got I've got the children. So when I do get a little bit of time off, I want to go out. Sure. I don't really like doing Netflix and chill and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, I'm I'm in my home most of the time. Mm. So I I I do want to go and let my hair down or go and have fun and do something. But then guys say that oh I've had a really hard week at work. I just want to chill. And then it like counteracts like what we both want but sure. I'm I'm hearing what you say and, even and I'm if, definitely going to 
hundred percent. Think about that. A hundred percent going forward. And if a guy does do that, oh, I've had a really hard week. Where why don't you just come over? You can say, as tempting as that sounds, I, I don't really share out. that space with someone I don't know that well. Yeah. So I'd love for us to maybe grab a coffee where we can get to know each other, and then we can take it from there. Yeah. Smile. And I'll face. be like, well, I've actually had a really hard week being a mum and I want to go out so if you don't want to go out that's fine I'll go find somebody else to go out with friends wise I'll go find some of my girlfriends to go out with no I mean, don't say that <laughs> I hear that I hear that what's uh, what's one last thing you want to ask and then we wrap it up um I don't think I have anything you good yeah has anything surprised you that we've talked about today that maybe I've said yeah, you still I think, think all I men think, are trash no I don't think all yes, men are trash we made it I changed her mind <laughs> Yeah, I I think I have kind of learned that a lot of my decisions, I mean, I think I already knew it anyway, mm. but yeah, I do just, I need, I need to prioritize time where we are, like you say, like, even if it's just meeting up for a couple of hours and there is no sex sort of is thing. off the table, yeah. 100%. And don't just choose a guy because he's most attractive. That's 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 that doesn't help. That's, it. that's not what I do. As long as it's not. Well, you won't be doing it now. <laughs> you won't, you won't be, be doing, doing it now. now. Um, Amelia, we appreciate you sharing your energy with us today. Thank you. Uh, if people want to find you, where can they find you? Um, TikTok, Instagram <laughs> at Amelia Rich. It's A M E I L I A Rich R I C H. Love it. Yeah. We love that. Well, thank you for giving us your time today. Guys, go show Amelia some love. Give her a like. Give her a follow. Check out her TikTok live streams. And then watch out for this episode uh, because we'll have some great clips from this one. So, um, but yeah, thank you for coming on. We thank appreciate you. For you. Me. Guys, thank you for tuning in. And I will see you in the next episode.